Okay, welcome to lesson four on analyzing statistics or analyzing statistics, who knows. Um, this is one variable analysis. So this is actually the, the culminating of the of the first three, first four learning targets. Uh, so it's what you're going to be required to do is uh, both in your culminating assignment and on the tests is just take a data set and compare it. Um, compare one variable, all the one variable stats. So that's measures central tendency, measures the spread, and then the distributions like from the box and whisker plot and the histograms. And so we're just going to walk through that right now. So you can apply the learning targets uh, to, the, to compare two sets of data. If you're asked to compare two sets of data, this means uh, calculate measures central tendency, spread, histogram, box plot, and fathom. What are the measures of central tendency of each? How are they different? What are the measures of spread for each? How are they different? What are the differences in the histograms, box plots, distribution? What do each tell you? And are there any outliers? If the outliers are removed, does that decrease the variability of the measures between the data sets? Uh, and the question will only say compare the two sets of data. So if we look at class A and B, which is found in this folder, and you can you can kind of go through that um, with the outlier. So there there is a couple outliers there, and there as you remove them, there's only one at the beginning, and then when you remove that, there, there's another one. But with the outlier, um, you can actually see the the average, the median. Uh, so the average of class A is higher. Um, the middle point for class A and B are, is the same, and the modal interval for class B is higher. So this this maybe suggests that um, that the outlier is affecting the average, uh, but class B is maybe uh, the um, performing just as well as class A. Spread and box plot. So if you look at you look at the box plots, we got the uh, put the median mean on here. Um, Q1, Q3, IQR, standard deviation, these are all new. And then the range, so we do the max minus the min. Um, and so you can see the standard deviation different. Uh, it's a lot more consistent in class A. The IQR is a lot lower, more consistent in class A. Um, and uh, and the, the, you can see where Q1, Q3 really make up the IQR. And the range is uh, lower in class A than class B. Uh, but that that does have a lot to do with the outliers. After removing the two outliers, you get a, you get a whole different picture. Um, the average actually goes goes way up for class B uh, past class A. Um, the standard deviation gets lower. It's lower like towards what class A is. The range is lower now than class A. Um, the IQR is 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 a lot lower than it was, but still a little bit higher than class class A. Um, and so before and after to get to get the picture, um, the median, um, these are the numbers for class A, and, and then these are the numbers for class B. Uh, you can see that the average has gone gone drastically up from 64 to, to 70.75. I actually didn't put that on here, but the remember that the average for class A was 71.47. Um, so your your average is actually closer to 71. Uh, for class for class B now, so the the outlier had a big effect. Um, without looking at the outlier, though, this is this is basically what we're looking for for the analysis. Uh, and we just go through each one of these lines. So the big thing is that you tell me what are, is the average for both, what is the mean for both, what do they mean, and then some kind of conclusion there. Um, so for class A, the average student was seventy one point four seven, which is higher for class A than class B. Median, the middle, the middle student uh, was the same for class A and B. The modal interval, uh, so five students scored 70 to 75. Four students scored 80 to 85 for class B. Doesn't tell you a whole lot, but it shows there are strong students in class B, even though the average is a lot lower. Um, the range is for is 50 for class A and 80 for class B. Class B is a lot more spread out. Uh, standard deviation, so a lot of people struggle with this. Um, Standard deviation, it, back to the normal distribution, it means the majority of students are, are within 13.3 from the mean for class A and 22 point, sorry, for class B and 22.8, um, sorry, that, that got mixed up. 13.3 for class A and 22.8 in class B, showing a lot more consistent data. So we just, um, that's actually for class B. Um, 
so it's so it's a lot more consistent in uh, in class A because uh, it's lower. IQR in class A is 16, class B is 26. The range for the middle 50 is, is much wider for class B. Um, so that that still like takes into account. Remember, like the the IQR is a better measure because it doesn't take into account those outliers. So class A is a lot more consistent than class B with those not so much the outliers because if we just want to take them out that doesn't change the fact that like really they should be there and but if they don't ha carry as much value then um and class a is still a lot more consistent distribution class a is more of a mound shape um shown by the box and whisker plot so you can see the mound shape for the histogram the mound shape for the box and whisker plot and then class B, although like you get this idea that it's potentially right skewed, uh, the median is to the right, the box is to the right. It doesn't show that so much on the histogram, but we definitely know it's right skewed because the um, sorry, this is the this is the histogram before you move, remove the outlier, so you can clearly see it is right. It is um, sorry, left skewed, not right skewed. So that. Class B is left skewed because the average is getting pulled to the left. The average is getting pulled down. And you can see that in the box plot. Um, so class B is left skewed, shown by the small mean and the box plot and the histogram. Uh, some conclusions that we make after we remove the outliers. And, and that's something you can do like if you have Fathom. Like it's, it's pretty easy to, to delete the outlier. Um, but some of these conclusions you can make um, what you would do without the outliers, you just you just make a conclusion about the size, like the, the marks in class A being higher and the marks in class A being more consistent as well. So that your your uh, conclusion is really just like who's who's better and who's more consistent. Okay, and so I wouldn't like you can the outliers are really interesting because they did have a dramatic effect. Um, and then if you take them out, so like the data looks very similar, class B slightly larger median, it can be argued B is still less consistent, although the range for class A is slightly larger. Um, so the argument's not nearly not entirely consistent. Um, and uh, this has been hinted to with the modal interval and the medians being the same uh, with the dramatic original difference in the mean. So even though the average is so much higher in class A, um, we, we kind of suspect that there's something going on. If we take those outliers out, I mean, and you can argue that they should be in there a little bit, but um, but if you take those outliers out, like class B is, is doing a lot better. Um, just potentially pretty valuable information for them. If they focus on those two students, then, then they, they're doing a lot better. Uh, some practice questions, like it's really just to start comparing data um, I, I know that number 11 is a, maybe a lot better to do than, and number 12 is really good as well. Um, it doesn't really get, no, number one's not very really good, like comparing the midpoint data. You, you can do that, um, and then compare different programs in the same year, or different years in the same program for different provinces.